Business Moment of the Week. Brought to you by Black Powder Coffee, the official coffee of WSIC. This portion of the show will bring you a business tip based on what business owners are looking for when buying a small business. Presented by our very own award-winning industry expert, Joe Vagnone. It is time to maximize the value of your small business before you are ready to sell. Back to the studio, here's Joe Vagnone. And this is tip number 20, three types of Power in negotiation. Um, here's the truth. All of these tips that I give you and all of the writing that you can get on my online at, at jvagnone.com, it comes from someplace else. I'm not trying to tell you I'm a master at all of this writing. What I do is try and apply it to a small business brokerage scenario. So these tips and strategies are here to help you do that. You can get all of these online at uh, jvagnone.com. Let me go through this with you. I found this to be exceptional putting into words what I've been doing for years. There's three types of power in negotiation, and make no mistake, it is power. There is leverage um, in a negotiation, and it is very helpful. Um, and so the, the, the first one is this... Uh, Lack of dependence of what other people think. What I mean is you should have given some thought and process to the negotiation before you're there, before you end up in the room, before you're in front of somebody. And I don't care if it's a car, a house, a boat, a, a business that you're buying. And um, you want to make sure that you've given consideration to the best alternatives to this negotiation. It makes you comfortable when conversations start coming back and forth. And so plan on and the, the dependence of others um, really becomes a problem. If you're waiting to hear what they got to say before you make up your mind, you just gave them uh, some power away. Number two, um, we call this position roles, position powers. Honestly, it really can work in your favor or can work against you uh, if you don't uh, for, for example, don't overplay your role. If you have a power position, if I'm the VP of sales and I'm in a room negotiating on a product or service, I might have a certain position of power that people are going to look to me before they agree or disagree on something. But don't overplay that. You can't overplay that in a way that now people see you or perceive you in a way that is not positive. In my case, I let... Uh, buyers know that they're not going to meet sellers until I find myself in a comfortable position with them. And it puts my buyers in a really strong uh, position of power that they are the owner. They can accept or reject any conversation, even the direction of the conversation on that. So that's really important uh, piece. One of the things I do and do it often um, so I, I uh, like to bring that up to you. The next one is, and this is really interesting, it, it is sort of a psychology power. You just feel that you're in control of the product, service, or negotiations. And let me tell you something. That is called preparation. Be prepared. The people that do the best job of negotiation aren't fine, skilled negotiators. They know their product and their service, and they are confident. And it is that confidence that absolutely comes into play. It is the biggest, strongest power you can have. You receive that confidence through knowing and being prepared what you are. You know, Donald Trump isn't the finest negotiator in the world um, for no reason. He's a really good negotiator because he knows his product and service. He knows development. He knows real estate. And that, and I can say that about a lot of different people in a lot of different industries. If you know your product, if you know the industry that you're in, that confidence, that preparation is a sense of power that will be very helpful for you. Again, these are tips and strategies for sellers to maximize the value of their small business. Three types of power in negotiation. You can get this at jvagnone.com. We thank you. Until the next tip.